Hey guys, welcome into Shock Collars Esports. Eric Kummel joined by Mark Horner in studio. And you know, a lot of these academy rosters are finally filling out. They have the last week or so. And it's very clear that some teams are taking different approaches with these <laughs> rosters, to say the least. Definitely a fair way to put it, Eric. You know, you're looking at these teams, and I want to start right off the bat with TSM. Because TSM is that team that is looking to be probably the most competitive team in the academy scene. You're looking down this roster and it's guys that can produce. Mr. Ral is, you know, being on that Fnatic academy roster before. This is a guy that I'm thinking is going to be dominating at the AD carry position here on the academy team. And what the important thing to look at with TSM in their academy team is why they want to have it. TSM has often stressed about the idea of scrimming against their academy roster with their main LCS team, coming up with different strategies in the meta and possibly getting to these cheese picks that other teams have been getting to faster than TSM has we've seen in the last year. And I think that's really important for them to synergize well with this academy team and use it to be better on the LCS stage. Yeah, and obviously, None of these guys are going to be starting on that no. TSM roster. <laughs> That's not a concern at all. And, I mean, does winning the Academy League, does that really matter? Is that even the purpose of that whole league? Not really. It's kind of just to see what a lot of these guys are capable of or to, yeah, maybe push some of your starters to keep a high level of play. Right, because you're looking at it and, you know, you want to really look at the mid lane with Bjergsen. When he's talked about it and with the Blaze Olive on this Academy roster team, what T Bjergsen really wanted from his Academy roster partner was someone he could bounce off of, someone he can relate to, but not someone that's necessarily going to be challenging him for starting roster time. And I think that's exactly what you find with a Blaze Olive, someone that he can talk to about the meta in the mid lane, dealing exactly what he's dealing with. And I think that this is someone who won't obviously be taking Bjergsen's spot. Yes, and then a totally different looking roster than something like TSM is an Optic Academy uh, team where, I mean, it's basically five unknown commodities. Clearly, they're just looking to see what these guys are capable of. Yeah, maybe they're not going to win the Academy League, but again, does that really matter? You just want to see if any of these guys have potential to play in the LCS. So that's a totally different strategy and way that they're going about things over at Optic. Yeah, and you're looking at with Optic that they're really just throwing these players kind of at the wall to see if anything sticks. None of these guys really strike out to me as someone who I think is going to be the next, you know, big prospect or even the next star moving forward. And that's prob probably a bit of concern when you're looking at Optic's main roster and you don't really see a lot of exciting things there and you're not seeing an exciting prospect coming up with the academy team. But they're just trying to see if any of these guys are for real, if any of these guys might have what it takes to take that next step. And I think that that is exactly what they're using their academy roster for. And uh, another thing that teams kind of look like they're interested in doing is maybe just almost fielding offers on some of their guys for the future. You look at 100 Thieves, they got Levi. Obviously, he's way too good to be playing on an academy roster. And a team like Clutch Gaming signing Piglet, I mean, I think people think he's still capable of starting on an LCS squad. It's just a matter of not being worth that import slot. But in two splits, he's going to be an NA resident, so maybe Clutch is just kind of hiding him on their academy roster until he is an NA resident. And then I think LCS teams might come calling at that point. But obviously these guys are just kind of holding these guys on their academy team to eventually be on the LCS squad. Right, because when you're looking at it and you're thinking about Levi, specifically on the 100 Thieves, this is a guy who should be starting. Based off skill alone, this guy's a monster, and there's no way he wouldn't be on the LCS stage. But one of the big drawbacks with him right now is obviously the communication issues. He doesn't fully have the grasp of the English language, and that's something that you really need to enable communication to work very well on, these, on the Rift. And so one of the important things for him on 100 Thieves is to learn English and possibly replace Medios, but then you run into the issue of, well, you have too many import players and how are you going to manage your roster slots there? But then obviously the other option is sell him. Get all that money and get all that cash that you just spent on getting an LCS spot nade shot, get it all back by selling off Levi to the highest bidder. Yeah, and as the leagues go forward, you're going to be getting bigger and bigger payouts for a lot of these guys. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's really what's great about these academy teams is you're going to be able to do things like that where you're able to groom guys and constantly be thinking about the future with a guy like Levi that maybe, maybe his English gets a lot better. You're bringing him in in summer split and then you have more time to find a replacement for Ryu in that mid lane. Maybe Lin Sanity turns out to be fantastic in that academy league and then you've got your NA resident mid laner. You can bring in Levi. So, I mean, 
I'm impressed by 100 Thieves. That it seems like they're thinking three steps ahead with their academy roster, and that's probably my favorite lineup out of these teams so far. I think it's definitely a very smart decision for them, but I don't want to overlook Piglet on the Clutch Gaming roster because when you're talking about Piglet, this is a former world champion. That's this, a while ago. It's that's been a while. while. But come on, this guy was on SKT. He played very well enough to get this huge fat money NA contract. He comes over and he doesn't quite live up to the hype, and I don't know if that's well enough on his own playing skills or just the fact of it's so hard to be bringing in an import in the bot lane position for NA that you're leaving yourself there but as we've said two splits from now Piglet's gonna be an NA resident player and possibly in for even bigger payday there and possibly an LCS spot after that we'll have to see but I think it was definitely interesting for Clutch Gaming to pick him up and then as well as Moon Moon was a guy that we saw pull off some of the greatest two-minute ganks early on in the LCS spring split last year and he's someone that I'm really interested to see how he's gonna perform on the Academy team yeah, well, it's pretty clear that teams are still figuring out what they want to get out of these academy teams. So it's going to be very interesting seeing that first inaugural split of the academy team. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.